Hello and welcome to this afternoon taste challenge. Okay, we've got Jack Daniels. Old number seven. When was this particular brand introduced? Well, <clears throat> that's a little bit of a controversy. We know the distillery can be traced back to 1866. 1866 but um this actual brand i'm not sure okay but regardless it's one of the old time venerable american whiskey brands as it says on the bottle mellowed mature tasted and awarded Okay, so there's Jack Daniels, Tennessee whiskey, sour mash, 80 proof. I was at Walmart today and it's $22.10 over there, I think it is. For that 750 milliliter bottle, this is a 2016 bottle because it's got the 150th anniversary insignia. All right, it's got the new squared off glass cup design, you know. Uh, versus Speckle Tail, introduced in 2017, not exactly uh, well known or renowned. American whiskey bottled in Florida. It doesn't say Florida whiskey, it said American whiskey. That tells us something. <laughs> that tells us it's not distilled in Florida. Almost certainly it's distilled in Lawrenceburg, Indiana by Midwest Grain Products, formerly the Seagram's Distillery. But anyway, they're both aged at least four years. These are not blended in the sense of being mixed, blended with grain neutral spirits, unaged grain whiskey. They're all just pure aged whiskey, okay? Jack Daniels technically is a bourbon whiskey, but it's not marketed as such. It's marketed as Tennessee whiskey. Speckle Tail technically is not bourbon whiskey, because if it was, you know they would, right? If it was, you know they would sell it as that. But it's probably being aged in used wood, used oak barrels. It says aged in oak barrels. Okay. Uh, so, um, if you go to Walmart, and I'm, I'm going to open up the chat area. If you go to Walmart, they've got this and Jack Daniels right there on the shelf next to each other. Every time you see Jack Daniels, you're going to see this. Why do you suppose they have those next to each other like that? Both aged about four years. Both 80 proof. Both pretty much the same color. But one bottle is ten seventy nine and one is twenty two ten. So basically paying twice as much, over over twice as much for the Jack Daniels. All right. Well, I'll be able to tell them apart. I have a feeling it's going to be tough. If you go to a party and you bring Jack Daniels, people might say, "All right, JD." If you go to a party and bring Speckle Tail. You might get what are you what is this and you say oh i bought it at walmart it was only 10.79 the reaction will probably be not cool man not cool because people aren't too open-minded about value price products even though it might be his and then if you say well let's have a blind taste test you're killing the party man you're really not killing the party you're just bringing up Conceptu conceptualities that they're not willing to entertain, right? JTLBZ says, hi, hi to you, JTBLZ. All right, so, but, you know, you can't get everybody to be open-minded about these things, so. Might be better just to bring Jack Daniels to the party and bring up 750. Don't be over there with a plastic, you know, don't be showing up at that 375.
But then, then you'll run into like the whiskey snobs and they'll be like, Jack Daniels. And then they're going to come lecture you about why you should never drink it and it tastes like airplane glue and it smells like DuPont chemical plant. And then they'll, they'll let you know without you ever asking or, by the way, showing any interest, all the really expensive Pappy Van Winkles that they've been drinking. <laughs> yeah, I'm drinking some Pappy Van Winkle. Uh, I was talking to a U.S. congressman. He lives in um, Austin, and he was uh, contacted me, and uh, I went to his house, and he got me some of that. And, you know, he gonna let you know all that. And you're like, okay, so you got both different, you got different approaches <laughs> that may, either, either way, it may not be too pleasant. All right, so, uh, speckle tail. All right, so speckle tail and Jack Daniels, well, basically the same shade. <laughs> I, I figured this, I, I figured this. You could just see him sitting in a lab at Midwest Grain Products and getting it refined down to a ding, 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 ding. There it is. It looks exactly like Jack Daniels. Let's taste it. Ah, and then they finally get it. Yes, it's exactly like Jack Daniels. Okay. Now, when I say they're not blended, I mean they're not mixed with the grain neutral spirits. But be warned, <laughs> um, these are not single barrel products, okay? They take many, 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 many barrels of Jack Daniels high up lower at the edge of the barrel house in the center of the barrel house aging room whatever you call it and they when i was on the tour i said say so you blend all those barrels together oh no he said oh no 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 we don't blend the stuff he said if you want to blend something put it in a blender so i say what no no he said we mingle it i said oh so they mingle different barrels of Jack Daniels together to get the right consistency. So, okay. Blend, you know, blend whiskey. Are you crazy? Are you mad? Have you lost your mind? Who ever heard of that? They mingle it. You, you pedestrian. All right. So it's mellowed for smoothness, drop by drop through sugar, maple, charcoal. Well, that's true. I, I went in that room and I saw that. They, they, they wouldn't let me take videos. He claimed that it was going to make the room blow up. Like there's too many fumes from the alcohol, and if I open the camera, it could explode the room by making a spark. Well, my video camera, this Canon, it's a Canon, doesn't make sparks. I just don't think they want you putting videos of that room on the internet. <laughs> I said, okay, sorry. I didn't get a video of it. But they do that. I and mean, it's huge, it's huge, this room is huge, you know, and I guess these barrels are huge and it's dripping, they got pipes, it's coming in, piped in and it's dripping, just little drips and it goes through the charcoal. Matured for character in our own handcrafted barrels. Yes, there is a place where they, they have their own company, they have their own barrel makers, they don't buy barrels from anybody and they have their own area where they make the charcoal. This is true. Tasted until deemed ready by masters. Well, all these liquor companies are going to have distillery masters that are going to taste the stuff to make sure it's okay. So that's not too remarkable. Awarded for quality and distinction. Seven gold medals since 1904. Who gave them out? Well, they don't say. But that's good. And you would expect that. I hadn't seen any recent awards, but I haven't really researched. It may have may have been at gotten some awards at San Francisco World uh, Spirits challenge. Oh, and this the city of San Francisco outlawed the sale of fur in their city today. So in case you thought communism and socialism were dead, <laughs> I'm pretty sure no one thought that. Um, speckle tail, well, you know, I'm sure they got Master Distill is tasting it, make sure it's okay. But uh, we're talking about big time at the biggest of the big time, right? The biggest of the big time versus the smallest of the small time, basically. 
half the price, however. Okay, so let's mix them up. Is it going to be a tough challenge? I think it will be, really. Because I think Speckle Tail was designed exactly for that purpose, to be a knockoff Jack Daniels brand. But did they pull it off? Well, I'm about to find out. I don't know. I suspect that they probably did. Because Midwest Grain Products is a big time deal. Caribbean Distillers is not a big time deal. That's true. But they're sourcing their stuff from a big time place. So Midwest Grain Products makes Seagram's seven and Redemption, the Redemption whiskey. So they're not putting out just stuff you ain't never heard of now. Okay. Mm -hmm. well, I've got it mixed up enough. I can't tell them apart. I don't know which is which. That's good. I'll start talking and I can't tell them apart. And that's what we want. I don't want to have any kind of uh, knowledge of which is which. I want it to be a true blind taste test. So let's taste. Well, first let's smell. The appearance is identical, but virtually identical. Uh -huh. Yeah, but I went up against Bim Jim Bim Jean, Jim Beam Choice this morning. I got it right, but I didn't have any confidence. It was just fifty fifty shot. And that kind of thing is like flipping a coin. Oh, I got it right. Well, you had a fifty fifty shot. So I didn't find it was remarkably different. I was a little shocked. I didn't find it was remarkably different from Jim Beam or Jim Beam Choice which is kind of surprising actually, but you don't know until you try right? If you don't know, then you don't know. Aaron Smith says, JD, correct. Correct. What's wrong with this video? I hope it's still showing. I don't know, it's like it's hung up, but. All right, the aroma here. Hmm. Okay. Now Jack Daniels says sour mash. They don't say sour mash on speckle tail. So that could be that could be the variable I hadn't considered now, you see. Oh, just standard here. You know, we don't need to really go into all the long drawn out what is a whiskey supposed to smell and taste like you probably know if you're watching this video. But this one here, yes, it has all the stereotypical whiskey aromas, but it seems to have sourdough bread. And I think that is what is gonna make me get it right. And I think this is Jack Daniels and I don't know cause I'm not looking at the label. Yeah, this one here seems a little less aromatic. Like it's a little dull, like it doesn't have a lot of character. Now, boy, if I'm wrong and I get it mixed up, I'm gonna say, oh, what's wrong with Jack Daniels? Okay. And I'm on the Jack Daniels website and they're going all into, oh, you know, they're going into all kind of detail about the whiskey and it's very complicated. And then you look at, and there's nothing about the green label, which I'm gonna do next week, or I plan to do it next week. But it's got the frequently asked questions, and they go through all kind of things. Is Jack Daniels a bourbon? Jack Daniels is not a bourbon. Uh, wrong, it is. Sorry, Brown Foreman, you're wrong. I'm right, you're wrong. What is Jack Daniels Green Label Tennessee whiskey? Well, it says, Jack Daniels Green Label is a lighter, less mature whiskey with a lighter color and character. The barrels selected for Green Label tend to be on the lower floors and more toward the center of the warehouse where whiskey matures more slowly. Check out our special edition section for other unique Jack Daniels products. Other, not this one, the Green Label, which we'll look at next week. It's, it's strange that they say it's less mature and they're getting it from the middle of the warehouse where stuff ages more slowly. So why would you get it from the middle if it ages more slowly? It's kind of weird how they do that. Adam Kennedy, Jim Bean Rye is my favorite. Oh, I keep seeing that. I saw it 
Tuesday, but I didn't buy it. Okay. Let's go with the taste. Yeah, it's got caramel, a lot of sugar. You know, th this bourbon or American whiskey, it's like so sweet. <laughs> it's just so sugary, so sweet. Well, I mean, that's not bad. It's just the way it is. And there's some nectar and dried flowers on it, but it's kind of flat in the taste. Let's go over here. Oh. Oh, baby. Now, you see, <laughs> this one has, yeah, it has the yellow corn grits, the polenta. Well, yeah. But it's got a rich uh, charcoal, <sighs> charred wood character. Okay. And that is, it's got to be Jack Daniels. It's got to be. Speckle tail. Yeah. There's wood, but it's faint. It's faint. And I think they're using those aging it and used barrels, and that's the difference. Old number seven is a classic. I'll take it over most other whiskeys despite the haters. JD all day, baby, says Adam Kennedy. And boy, do they have some haters out there. They got people claiming, I'd rather drink water than drink Jack Daniels. You know, like the same people that say that about Bud Light. Bud Light, if anybody, if I went to a wedding reception and all they had was Bud Light, I'd just drink water. Really? Okay, well, wow, that's dedication because like 99% of everybody else in the world would just drink Jack a Bud Light and probably have a good time at the wedding. But, you know, got to be different. Well, that's your, it's your purview. You have a right to do that. We're not saying you don't have a right to do that. But the problem with the snobs is they wouldn't just drink the water, you know. See, if you just chose to drink water, you're not really a beer snob. No, the snobs are going to go around telling everybody about it. Oh, you're drinking the Jack Daniels. Well, let me tell you why you shouldn't be and why I'm not. And then they're going to make a big thing. And you're like, oh, man, I don't really want to hear this. You know, it's kind of having fun, having fun at the party. But, you know, that's the difference between the a beer um, or a whiskey or a wine. Let's say somebody that's very particular with their taste in beer, wine, and whiskey. Fine. Drink what you want. Not a problem. No one should care. It's your business. The snobs are not going to just do that. You know, they're going to go around and tell everybody why they're doing it and why you shouldn't be doing it. See, they can't just, you know what I mean? It's like some people are agnostic. They're saying, I don't know if God is real or if he's not real, but I'm not going to worry about it, you know. Okay. I'm Catholic. I would prefer if people were all believers, practical Catholics. Okay. Okay. But the atheist is not going to just do that. They're not happy because there are people on earth that believe in God. So they got to, they're like more missionary. They have more zeal than a missionary, you know. They're going to go around telling everybody why they shouldn't believe in God. And they're angry because you believe in God and it's bothering them because you believe in God. And they proselytize, you know. So that's that's the thing about the beer snobs and the whiskey snobs. They, they can't just let, you know, they cannot have a laissez-faire approach, French word for let it be. They cannot. They got to lecture. Okay. Okay. And I was that way early on. Now, I'll admit that. When I first... When I first got into beer drinking in February 96, you know, everybody in my family drank Coors Light or Miller Light. I don't really think too many of my people in my family ever drink Bud Light. I don't I don't know too many people in my family that were really Budweiser people. I don't know why. Maybe my family, my mother's side and my father's side don't feel comfortable with the Anheuser-Busch yeast strain. Okay, it could be that. All right. <laughs> I'm not actually I'm telling the truth. I'm not really being sarcastic or cheeky about it. But, okay, so they're drinking Coors Light, Miller Light. Oh, they're just happy. Now, these are happy people, and they're having a good time, and they're drinking. And they drink a lot. Okay. So I had to show up, you know, and, like, present other items to them that they weren't interested in. 
but I had to like hammer it, hammer it. Well, that did not work. They did not give up Bud Light to try other things or Cor uh, <laughs> Bud Light. Coors Light or Miller Light to try other things. I was just like an irritating pest, you see. But I was only 27, 28 years old, so I didn't understand this approach. But now I'm 49 years old, so I've, I think by experience you learn like, no, you cannot force things on people. And so I, I adopted over time a more laissez-faire approach, a live and let live approach. Like I might suggest things to people even today. I'll suggest things. Why don't you, how would you like to try this? Nine out of 10 times, no, but they appreciate it. But then I'll let it rest. Although there will be a few people occasionally that will inquire, what about this? What about that? So that you open up that avenue that people will try different things. But then you're not an irritating pest. So there we go. That's a better approach, but I had to learn through experience. <clears throat> now, my father was willing to try different things back then when he was drinking. 96, when I started drinking beer, 96 to 2003. He says 2002. I'm almost certain it was January 2003 when he drank the last beer, but or whatever the case. So we're talking about eight, uh, <laughs> six years. So he would try different beers I would bring. And he was open-minded, but he didn't like them. Okay, he just honestly did not like the stuff. So he would try it, he just didn't like it. And he would say, I don't like it, I don't like it. It's too rich, I don't like it. He was like, he just wanted to drink Coors Light. But he would try it, he would try the stuff. He just didn't like it, okay. So he gave up all beer. So he, he would try things at least. Okay, have you done a Canadian Hunter review, Ron? It says Dilly Dilly, no. No, I have not yet, but I have a bottle in, an, un <laughs> an unopened bottle in the cabinet. Yes, and I got a great deal on it, I think. Well, okay, not a great deal, but a good deal, an appropriate, satisfactory deal. So, yes, I plan to try it sooner than later. I have so much back stock. It's an, I went on a buying frenzy from like 2015 to 2017, 18, well, 17. And I, oh, yeah, 18. I, I kind of cooled off in 18. So I got caught up in it. But now, but well, that's good because I got great, I, I never did pay too much for any of the, the stuff. So, I have a good back stock so I can really now concentrate on what I've got and do all these exciting uh, adventures. I call it adventures with all the, the, the liquor. So, but unfortunately people are going to suggest all kinds of things, but I'm going to say, I can't, I can't, I can't cause I got too much. You understand? What's up, Ron says brick lens, brick lens. Well, I'm drinking. Uh, I mean, <laughs> silly me. I'm tasting some uh, whiskeys drinking. It's, sometimes I say the wrong thing, and I meant to say tasting, tasting, not drinking, tasting. Silly you, silly me. All right, so anyway. Yeah, this has got to be Jack Daniels. It's got too much of that famous taste. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, corn. Y'all want to eat some eggs and grits with a little bacon on the side? Let's do it because you could drink the, the grits. I'm telling you, bourbon is starting to grate on my nerves. But anyway, you say Tennessee whiskey, Tennessee whiskey. Okay, right. But you know what I mean? It's bourbon. All right. Yeah, Jack Daniels. I mean, there's no, I called it with the aroma, right? Go back and watch the original, the beginning of the video. I called it on aroma, on aroma alone. Is speckle tail a good value? Well, yeah. It's 1079. And it has a pleasant flavor, but it ain't no Jack Daniels and not by a long shot. So in other words, Jack Daniels beats the fool out of this. You know what I mean? So it is not an adequate substitute. And when you drink the speckle tail for $10.79 a bottle, and then you drink the Jack Daniels for $22 and or $23 a bottle, you know why. The Jack Daniels is twice as cost twice as much because it is twice as good. I mean, 
Speckle Tail, yeah, it did fine when I put it up against the lesser lights of the bourbon world. Your Ancient Age, Ten High, uh, Barton, very old Barton. Uh, uh, um, all these types of things, you know. I'm trying to think of some more. I got so many. <laughs> it did fine. But then when I started putting it up against Jim Beam and Jim Beam Choice and now Jack Daniels, no, it ain't measuring up. Sorry, Speckle, uh, Speckle Tail, but I drink Jack Daniels. I've hung out with Jack Daniels. He, you'll know Jack Daniels. Um, <clears throat> but I predicted that. All right, so... Just, you, just in case you were wondering, can you get a $10.79 whiskey that will rival Jack Daniels? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> uh, Bricks Lens is a car from the 70s. I love Gentleman Jacks. Oh, it's a car from the 70s? Oh, okay. Huh. I don't know much about that. Gentleman Jack. Uh, yeah, I had Gentleman Jack at the distillery, a little sip of it. It it, it was okay. It's very watered down, but on purpose, because what they do is they, they charcoal mellow it twice. They drip it through the charcoal, and then they drip it through the charcoal, sort of like making tea with a used tea bag. By design, because they say some people don't like Jack Daniels because it's too bold or strong or harsh, whatever, you know. That's fine with me. I mean, if they want to double filter it. Of course, the only problem there is that um, why would you charge like 40% more money for something that's half as potent in, in the sense that the, the flavor isn't there? I mean, it's got the same proof, 80, but um, it's a little peculiar. But it works because they're selling it like crazy. I see Gentleman Jack all, all over the place, right? Okay, so uh, yeah, that's the end of that. Jack Daniels beat Speckle Tail down. Speckle Tail jumped up to get beat down, you know. Hillbilly Wine says, uh, "What's up, buddy? I just got home from work. I will relax and watch your live track." Okay, interesting. Another one I like is Kessler. Ah, uh, um, before I get off of here. I'll show y'all something real fast. I mean, we got a little time, not a lot, but I'll show you something. So hold on a moment. You've seen the commercials where they say, uh, <clears throat> have you had your juice today? You remember that ad campaign? No, I haven't yet, but I will. So here's the Morgan David Blackberry. <laughs> I did a video. I'll have a little bit of juice. Um, <clears throat> I can't wait to... I can't wait to try the pomegranate. I bought the pomegranate, my, and I was at my father's house. He said, let's try it. I said, oh, I don't have my camera. I was going to do a video. And then later he said, no, nah, don't worry about it. He really doesn't drink. But he was think he was tempted, you know, tempted by the fruit of another. Um, but he said, no, no, no. Been there, done that. But he only, but honestly, he only drank steadily from about, oh, 1955, uh, 58 till about 2003. That was it. <laughs> and prolifically. Okay, but anyway, so <laughs> there's your uh, Mogan David, Mogan David Blackberry. Hmm, does it really taste like Blackberry? Uh, um, honestly, it just tastes like grape jelly, you know, like Welch's grape jelly, which is fine, but doesn't have that weird high fructose corn syrup. <laughs> Look at this. Look at this. 
Bricks Linsv, 1970, Kessler. Oh, oh boy. Yes, look at that. You see this? Do you see this? Hey, you know what? This is the second best selling blended whiskey in America. True story. Uh, it's not too popular in Louisiana, but I can get a big jug bottle at Dorgnex. But I have this little 200 milliliter bottle. It's not just like your run of the mill blended whiskey, which is 80 20 ratio and 80 20 ratio. The Julius Kessler American blended whiskey is. Uh, 72.5% aged more than two years old. So 72 and a half. And what would that be? Seven, 27 and a half straight whiskey, right? Yeah. 72 and a half to 27 and a half. So it's 27 and a half percent pure whiskey. And it's bottled by Julius Kessler Company. Yeah, right. Julius Kessler Company. Frankfurt and Claremont, Kentucky. Ah, Frankfurt and Claremont, Kentucky. Hmm. Oh, Jim Beam Company. Right. That's okay. Nice little label showing a, a wagon train, a, a stagecoach, I mean to say. A stagecoach, an old town, mountains, somebody out west. Looks like... Uh, Mm, I don't know, Colorado, New Mexico, Wyoming, something like that. Kessler. Oh, I can't wait to try this Julius Kessler. This is old, too. This is not like something that came out with in 1979 and tried to make it seem like it was an old brand. Oh, no, sir. This came out like in the days of the great out, you know, the great the days of the great American West, you know. Anyway, here's a new one. Old Camp American Blended Whiskey. 80 proof. Old Camp. Yeah, I see this everywhere now. There's all kind of flavor ones. Peach and all kinds of stuff. I bought the, the original. It's glass too. See? Not plastic, which is nice. Bottled by Old Camp Whiskey. Oh, never heard of that company. Lawrenceburg, Indiana. Uh -huh, heard of that company. Oh, you mean Midwest Grain Products. In other words, Seagram's. Right. It's used under license from the trademark owner. And who is the trademark owner? Well, let me tell you. There's a pop country pop band, or whatever you call it, pop country, called Florida, Georgia. I don't know. I don't listen to those those kind of um, bands, but it's Georgia, Florida line or Florida, Georgia line. <laughs> and they licensed this old camp whiskey, sort of like they promoted at their concerts and stuff. Some of y'all know what it is. And, uh, but that's, but the, it is, it is done from a band and uh, they promoted it at their concerts, kind of like what uh, Jimmy Buffett did in 2006 when he started to license Land Shark Lager, which was sold through Margaritaville restaurants and in conjunction with Anheuser-Busch InBev. So Land Shark Lager, bottles and cans, is in, it's a, it's a team up. It's Jimmy Buffett Enterprises, wasting away again in Margaritaville and Anheuser-Busch. And it's a fairly successful brand. Are they worried about it taking away business from Corona? I don't see why they own Corona. You know what I mean? Either way, they're getting the money. <laughs> the comments, people, the comments. Bricks Lens says, uh, take a hit, Ron, review it. Well, I'm going to wait, but I'd like to, but I'm going to wait. I got, I have to, I have to keep things in check. Woo-ha, I got you all in check. Nick Vukusic says, hola. Nick Vukusic says, try a Boilermaker, Kessler's and Blatt's. Oh, uh, well, you know, unfortunately, I cannot get Blatt's. Blatt's was sold in Louisiana, but it was probably 50 years ago. Uh, there's an old 1951 advertisement, magazine advertisement, I think from like Jet or Ebony Magazine, 
saying, you know, here's this black man. And that's what it says, actually. His name is such and such, and he's the brand distributor or, or brand representative for Blatt's Brewing Company. And he, he is the, he's our man in New Orleans. He represents Blatt's in New Orleans. So apparently Blatt's was focusing on the black population of Louisiana, which is a big percentage of our state. And, uh, but that was, that's another story. Blatt's got bought out by Pabst and it was a big lawsuit, uh, uh, an antitrust suit from the US Justice Department, which eventually Pabst won Unfortunately for Paps, it cost him so much money, it crippled the company and helped help lead to the downfall of Paps, who's only recently recovered. True story. Um, and um, a similar thing happened with Fawcett Publications, who, who came out with a comic book character in the 1940s named Captain Marvel. They got sued by national publication, national periodicals, you know, DC Comics, National, and the lawsuit dragged on for years. Fawcett did win the lawsuit, but it crippled the company because of the, the cost and the distraction from the lawsuit. And they folded. And that led to the whole Captain Marvel saga, which I'm not going to get into. Dilly Dilly said, did you get the new natural ice can down in Louisiana yet? No. I went to Walmart this morning and I looked and their natural ice section was empty. The 30 pack, all he sells 30 packs at Walmart. And I'm pretty sure what happened was that Southern Eagle said, look, let it sell out completely because once you put the new cans on the shelf, nobody's going to buy the original, you know, the previous design. So they're going to let it all sell out. And once the supply is exhausted, then they'll put the new stuff out there. So I would say another week, it'll probably show up. It's probably already in the warehouse, the new cans, you know. Uh, Paps is popular here in OC, California these days, Orange County, says Bricks Lens. Oh, it's popular here too, yes. Do you get Paps American Pale Ale there? No, we don't, do not. I have a feeling it's only being test marketed. Uh, most people I know don't get it, haven't seen it. And uh, they don't even ref they don't even talk about it on their website. So I got a bad feeling that we're never going to see Paps American Pale Ale and that it's going to be there today gone tomorrow. I'm sorry, but got a bad feeling. I would try it. I think it. the reviews I heard from people is kind of okay. Wasn't that great? Um, kind of like that dog tag, that dog tag beer that was made to raise money for wounded veterans that was handled by Pabst. Didn't really go over too well. Bricks Lens says, what's your go-to beer these days? Oh, nothing. And I'm not saying that to put you off. Uh, I don't really have a go-to beer. I just buy whatever I feel like checking out. Like, I don't know why. I just had this idea to buy natural light. And I bought the 36 pack. Wasn't expecting a whole lot. Didn't get a whole lot. It's kind of dull, you know. Uh, um, and then I bought some Bush Light, a 12-pack bottles, and it's all right. They're comparable. They're kind of dull, you know. I'm not really a light beer person. Okay, I'm going to shut this off. Uh, do you watch superhero movies? No. I used to watch them, but um, I didn't really like them. I have a lot of comic books, you know. You can see that, all this, you know. But It doesn't seem to me translate to translate well it goes when you read the comics they're good you know they're good but then well they used to be good that i wouldn't say they're good now but um i don't find it translate too well to film <laughs> and then now they got all that cgi so it's like watching a cartoon and i'm not into cartoons i was when i was eight to me you know computer generated imagery cgi ever since i started seeing that it always looked like a cartoon to me it looked fake I'm talking about way back when it first started, you know, 1989 with that, that movie about being underwater, whatever that movie was. They had aliens underwater, James Cameron movie, whatever. Seemed fake to me, you know. Uh, natural light, yikes. Laugh out loud. Yeah, well, you know, it's all right. It's a good light beer. But uh, how do you think Jack Daniel number seven compares to Benchmark? 
Well, our rating on your parade says, well, I think uh, Benchmark can give Jack Daniels a run for his money, honestly. I think Benchmark is a pretty high quality product. Anything coming out of uh, Buffalo Trace, uh, you can't take that too lightly. That's, that's no joke, man. No joke. Now, is it as good as Jack Daniels? Number seven, old number seven, old number seven. You talk about the black label, I'm pretty sure. I don't, I don't know about all that, but it's good. Ron, try the stone barbecue sauce. It's very good. Stone barbecue sauce. Hmm. I, I wasn't even aware of that. I've seen a lot of beer barbecue sauces like Budweiser barbecue sauce. Now there's something else over there at Matherns. Uh, some beer company. I can't remember. There's Jack Daniels barbecue sauce, of course. But uh, I, I haven't tried it. Okay. Well, anyway, so... Um, that's the end of that. Um, so uh, in about five days, we'll do another taste challenge. I think, God willing, uh, we'll try to do um, Jack Daniels number seven, you know, the green label, the elusive green label versus Speckle Tail. Do I think Speckle Tail is going to do well against it? No, I, don't, I do not. I don't think Speckle Tail stands a chance. But we'll see. Later on, take it easy, bro. Hey, you too. Thanks for watching, folks. And we're going to end this now. <laughs> Have a great Thursday evening and a great weekend. And as Stuart Picard would say over there in Yorkshire, England, you take care.